wrap for the 2022-23 season. Co-host Zach Scribner and Adrian Musso, joined by head coach Greg Walters and a special welcome new assistant coach Sean Tico. Guys, how are you tonight? Great. Thank you so much for having us. Doing great. Thank you so much for having us. We'll, uh, we'll start it off. The Owen Sound attack finished the preseason with a perfect record, 4-0. We'll break down each game later on. Uh, on the episode here tonight, but first off guys simply how was the summer for the both of you? Oh summer was great. I got two boys in high-level baseball, so I'm uh, daddy uber and uh, <laughs> So I just travel around so real proud of them and uh, really just uh, focusing on uh, on my two boys and, and family and friends And yeah, for yourself. It was a uh, it was a good summer as well um, Spent a lot of time on the ice and just spending some time with family and stuff like that. So it's good to get away from the rink for a little bit, but refreshed and ready to go. So you had a busy summer with the boys, and you had an experience with Hockey Canada. How was that for you? Yeah, it was uh, obviously a, uh, a privilege to be announced head coach of the U17 team, and I really look forward to doing that. And and uh, um, that's in uh, in early November. So. Um, Listen, the team's in great hands with, with Sean and Jordan Hill. They're, they're amazing coaches, and uh, I'll miss a few games with doing that. But the organization was, uh, was you know, pushed me to do it and, uh, and just try to make everybody better. And, and we, we learn a lot of things there and, and bring stuff back and, uh, and just trying to make our players better, our coaches better, and, and, uh, and move forward here. Now, before Zach gets to the next question, I have a question for you on that tournament that comes in November. Uh, I assume the roster is not announced as of yet, but no. do you expect any of the boys, uh, there was four of them at that U17 camp, to potentially make the, make the team? Yeah, I mean, obviously we're hoping that all four of them do that. Uh, that has nothing to do with the coaches, just more or less like here. Uh, Dale and, and the scouting staff draft the kids here, and, and we just coach, so, and that's how things should be. So, you know, obviously we're hoping for them. Uh, I'd be very shocked if, if Ben Cormier wasn't, uh, uh, you know, announced there. But, uh, um, you know, the, the other kids, Rogers has been really good to see things picking it up. And, and George was outstanding here. Um, in his little time with us uh, during the game, so we're we're really excited about the future, and and I and I hope and, and wish uh, the best for those guys that that they're able to play for their country. And Sean, uh, you were hired this past summer by the Owenstown Attack. You mentioned to us uh, off camera you had some experience um, playing in the OHL, obviously going up against the Attack at some point. Um, when the hiring process came, were you excited to get that phone call from Dale DeGray? And what did you know about the city of Owen Sound? Yeah, it's, you know, Owen Sound's a first-class organization all around, and um, I had some running-ins with Dale um, for a while now. I worked for the Ottawa 67s for five or six years as a scout, so I um, always saw Dale around the rinks, and he was always cordial and very nice, and um, my dad's a part of the scouting staff as well, so um, the transition was very easy, and I was super, super excited, and, you know, having a, a relationship with Wally a little bit before I got here was very easy decision and I was nothing but excited and elated to be part of this organization. Now you just had mentioned it, you had a little bit of the experience uh, scouting before with the Ottawa 67s, then Sean went on to coach, uh, be assistant coach with the uh, Niagara Ice Dogs last season before coming here to Owen Sound. Now that's a lot of experience in the OHL, what is one particular thing that you might be able to bring back here to Owen Sound and give to the uh, young men? It's just a, a fresh voice and a fresh pair of eyes. Um, you know, as, as coaches, we all have our own philosophies and we all have our own um, little pits that we like to do. And I do a lot of skill development during the summer, so I try to coincide all that with uh, coaching. So just, you know, a fresh voice and a fresh set of eyes for something new that they want to develop on or change on or, or just a fresh voice to bounce ideas off of. Now, you clearly saw um, before being hired, you watched the team, uh, the, your, your dad being a part of the organization as well. Um, and this team has high ex expectations. The city of Owen Sound has high expectations for this team. Um, could you sense those high expectations during the hiring process? Yeah, for sure. Talking to Dale and um, talking with Wally after, you can tell that everyone has high expectations, but at the same time, um, we got to show up every day and we got to work and we got to develop these guys and we got to be on our P's and Q's. And, even though we have high expectations, that doesn't mean it just happens for us. You know, we have to step in every day and we have to work every day, but the expectations are high and, you know, everyone knows how detailed Wally is and how detailed Jordan Hill is, so 
I have no doubt that we're going to get there, but it's still a process for us to get there. And that was my next question for you, Greg. How do you make sure that those guys are locked in night out, night in, night out, and not really getting ahead of themselves? Well, I scream a lot at them. <laughs> uh, no, really, it's just it's a lot of uh, repetition, really, and it's just paying attention, attention to detail is is our biggest uh, quote around the room, and in understanding that we want to be um, the hardest working team um, without the puck, and um, and we believe that we have the the team to score goals, but we really have bared down here on on our our D zone, our breakouts, our our rush coverage, and our tracking to um, to make sure that uh, we're very very good defensively and. And listen, we put a lot of uh, pressure on these kids to, to work hard. A lot of them don't know how hard they they can work, and uh, and we're getting them uh, we're getting them there. Now, Sean, uh, you had the opportunity to coach one on one with Colby Barlow. We'll go into a few other players as the night goes on, but what does Colby Barlow bring to a summer? Um, one-on-one -on -one session is his compete level as big on the ice then as it is in a preseason game when he's uh giving cross checks and punches yeah yeah it, it is for sure and i don't think you're ever going to take that out of colby colby's a natural competitor and you know even today in practice he got mad at me during a five-on-five -five drill during practice <laughs> you know but that's just colby and i think that's what makes him special he, he's not just a one-dimensional player he's not just a goal scorer he's he's an all-around player he plays the 200 feet game he's a character guy and he's just an unbelievable kid to be around all the time so i got enough good things to say about him greg obviously last year was your first full year here in owen sound as the head coach the 30 win streak continued i saw that yeah. quote that was, that was a good one uh what was your takeaway from owen sound last year uh compared to your times in other markets it's cold <laughs> it's cold here and a lot of snow but uh no honestly it's uh it was great and, and you know i've said this to multiple people i think this is my 21st or 22nd year coaching and and it was by far um my favorite season and in Owen Sound, through the ownership and, and uh, the GM and um, the scouting staff and the trainers, everybody just does their job. And it's, uh, you know, it, it works out amazing. Obviously, we can see how uh, Dale and his uh, scouting staff have, you know, put uh, this team in place. And and, and then he, Digger's been great with me, just allowing me to coach and, and um and, and be able to do the things that we want to do here. And obviously he steps in at, at times, but uh, um, it was by far my favorite year uh, of coaching. And Sean, um, you hear it from the players. It's the best place to play in, in the league. It's a bit cliche at times. A lot of those players will say that. Have you felt much fan support early on in your time here from coaching this year? Yeah, yeah, definitely have. Definitely felt tons. Um, just, you know, even going to like Tim Hortons or going to grab some lunch, you know, people are saying good luck this season or, you know, a great game the other night. So um, it's great to have that and it makes you feel like kind of like a little bit of a star in a small town. It's, it's, it's a great feeling. So you can definitely tell why guys love playing here. Let's, uh, let's move to training camp now. What's a moment or two that sticks out to the both of you from this past <laughs> season's training camp? Oh, there's so many with this group, man. If I <laughs> if I could uh, talk, uh, I can't really talk out loud on the TV here with some of the stuff. But uh, listen, these kids uh, bring joy to us. Uh, you know, they're they're amazing kids. I think um, you know, going through the exhibition games and and having multiple guys um, multiple guys out, you know, out of the lineup through going to NHL camp and and just honestly watching. Uh, the young kids get better and better every every day is, is something really really special uh, one that comes to mind was uh, we were we I think it was our first game we tied in in uh, in Barry and uh, the young George kid uh, was in that and uh, we go to go to shootout and so they're flooding the ice and he skates out of the net and watching he comes over to the bench and he's like don't worry boys I got this I was like <laughs> You got this. You think got Cardwell? They got <laughs> back to now coming down on you. And uh, anyways, he stopped all three shots. I was going to say and, he saved all three of those. And but it was just it was amazing to see a 16-year-old goaltender, you know, come over and go. It's okay, guys. I got this. I'm like, good for you, kid. So you know that was. Those are just, you know, how these kids are and, and 
our goaltending is is definitely in great hands uh, for this year and and for the future coming. And Sean, a moment that sticks out for you? Yeah, I would say you know Wally probably took mine there. Uh, the George one was pretty pretty astonishing, but I would, I would say that last game against Barry, you know, having those guys get kicked out early and being down bodies. I looked down the bench at one point, like we only had three forwards and one D-man. Um, just having those guys kind of just strap on their work boots and find a way to win that game and find a way to not give up the 30 shots and <laughs> and, and just to find a way to win and showing desperation and it, it felt like a playoff game in preseason. So that, was, that made, super, made me super proud. Now you just mentioned something, not give up 30 shots. Is that a goal of your guys this year to not give up 30 shots? And I would assume the opposite would be to get 30 shots? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm a little uh, crazy with that. <laughs> uh, so the boys know it and, and it, it's actually fun. You know, we, they know that I start sweating when they get around 29, 28, and, and when it goes over 30, I'm not happy. So, you know, and that's how, I, I just believe that's how you win. And, and um, but the guys really, they're like, boys, we're at 27, you gotta block shots. <laughs> we don't see, they don't wanna see Wally eyes uh, tonight. So it's, um, it's something that, you know, that we wanna take pride in. And, and we feel that we have the team to, um, you know, take other teams' time and space away and, and not, uh, not be giving up that, those shots. And, and obviously, you know, offensively, yeah, we wanna get, you know, 30 to 40, you know, shots uh, for us. So it, it, it ends up being a great uh, team building thing. Thing and uh, it, it was fun last night to watch again. I know you didn't get the, the win last season, but that 60 shot performance against Kitchener must have been your favorite game of the year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think they got to 20 either that game, maybe uh, maybe just a little bit over, but uh, you know, that's it's just countless hours of, of these kids and, and they're buying in every day and, and listen, the, the character uh, from our team is, is unmatched. Um, with the kids that Dale and the scouting staff have brought in and uh, it's honestly it's a pleasure to go to work every day and, and, uh, and work with these kids and, and help them uh, try to achieve their, their dreams and goals. We're going to talk about that character in a bit but uh, Sean I'll start with you first. What's one player that really caught your eyes uh, maybe from main camp moving up to today? Um, I would say obviously other than Colby. Um, <laughs> Gavin Bryant, I think uh, he's taken a massive step and kind of you guys just hit a buzzword there for Gavin. I think character is just a massive thing that's part of him and um, he's just a character and he comes in the room and just everyone's smiling and he's always in a good mood and he's always happy to be there but when it's time to put the work boots on, he's he's there and he's he's willing to put in the work and he's just, you know, it's his vision on the ice and just seeing the plays that he can make. It's kind of really opened my eyes to the playmaker that he can be in this league. And Greg, the question for you, one player that's impressed you this year and maybe that's elevated their game from last season? Man, that's the stop they all have. And, and, and uh, um, Andy played an amazing job with, uh, with our kids uh, getting in shape and they all came back in tremendous shape. And, uh, and, and they knew that, you know, this was going to be a big year for us. So, you know, everyone's, everyone's looked uh, really special. You know, one kid for me is, is uh, Cormier coming in, first round pick. And, you know, he was just getting his feet wet and just every single day you just see, you know, him getting better and better and better every day. And, you know, he was, uh, he was out there killing a ton of penalties for us and, and paying attention to uh, Jordan Hill runs our penalty kill. And um, I really, really loved what, I, what, I, what I've seen. And Owen Sound's gonna love what they see in this kid, uh, not only this year, but in the years coming. Just before we move on, in an interview with Adrian last year, he said, I'm here to score goals. That's in the playoffs just after he got drafted. That's with Colby Barlow on your team who put up 30 goals, said he gained all. So impressive character and confidence from him when he was just drafted into the OHL. Yeah, it, that's that's it. And he's got that. And, and listen, there's a difference between cocky and incompetent. And uh, he's not, not cocky at all. He believes in himself. And, and listen, it's been, you know, it's, you're going through this and you're coming from minor hockey where they're the best players and it's just like go out and score us a goal and they don't know really how to play hockey at, at, you know especially at this level so it's been a learning curve for them but you know like just watching them grasp everything we do in practice and and then it translates into a game he's he's definitely going to be a very very good player at both ends of the rink 
Now, it's every hockey player's dream to play in the NHL, and you guys had five uh, players get the opportunity to don an NHL sweater uh, just this past week, actually. Um, you had uh, Servac Petrovsky in Minnesota, uh, Cedric Gaindon in Montreal, Caleb Lawrence in LA. They just announced that the, the three of them are coming back, and then you had Ethan Burroughs in Florida and uh, Denny Gould in uh, Carolina. What experiences do they bring back with them or um, character traits or evolution to their game after coming back from a camp like that where the three the three first that I mentioned were playing there with NHL players? Yeah, I mean, honestly, you know, we, we always, you know, have one-on-one -on -one meetings with them when they get back and, and ask them and, and Listen, they're kids, right? They're they're young young men playing against um, big, strong, talented, skilled uh, men, and that are that are um, are playing this game to to feed their family. So they all come back and they don't uh, you know to a to a guy it's how hard they work and, and what they put in their body every day and how they take care of themselves and and how they work out on and off the ice is is, is the big eye opener for these guys so it's great that they can come back and and tell our our young guys or our guys that weren't as fortunate to get to a camp um, what it really takes to, to be at that level and this that's the first step is getting drafted and getting to a camp you got to get signed and and uh, I think they all realize what it takes now and and uh, and our whole team will be better for that now we're gonna go into the the four preseason games that uh, you guys had this uh, this preseason um, but before going into the games as a whole, I'm just going to ask a question. I saw on the OHL site that some teams played six games, some teams played five games. You guys played the minimum of four games. Uh, is there a reason for that? I don't think so. Uh, you know, Dale uh, Dale does it, uh, this, the schedule, and uh, I'm, I'm quite happy. I, I mean, I, I think practice time is, is so important in, in developing, um, you know, our structure and, and our details um, through through practice and not overplaying. So um, I really, I loved it, and, um, you know, I hope it, it, it actually continues. Obviously, we had a great, great preseason, and, um, and we hope that rolls right into uh, right into the regular season here. Now that preseason started off with a win against the Barry Colts, but it didn't come with any adversity. You guys were down three nothing to start, and then came back to tie it. And then you guys just mentioned it a little bit earlier ago. Carter George stole the show with his uh, three saves in the in the shootout. Mm -hmm. What characteristics does that first game bring to to the guys on the team? Well, again, it's just it's what you know. Sean and I have been talking about here. It's it's the character inside that that dressing room and um you know obviously we got down three nothing we were we were out playing them to be honest and um you know we weren't executing at, at their end and and uh, by no fault to corbin board terry they were they were great goals um and uh but the the character on this we're never out we're never we'll never be out of a game with uh, the guys that we have and uh you know it's just it's it's so fun like i like i, I can't tell you guys enough how how fun it is to be around these guys now sean that was your first pre preseason first game as a as a bench boss with the Owen Sound attack, how was that feeling? Yeah, it was a, it was a great feeling, and to, to get the win, it was an even better feeling. But you know, just to touch on what Greg said there, it was just great to see no flinch from these guys. You know, they went down three nothing, and um, some of the goals happened pretty quick, and there was no panic, there was no negativity, there was no getting down. It was just yeah, we got a next goal mentality, and we're gonna get it back, and we'll find our way to win it here. So that was great to see. Now, uh, we mentioned Carter George's play, but Sean, as a former OHL scout, uh, maybe from his time from rookie camp all the way to leaving for Junior B, what did you see in Carter George that has you excited for the future? A lot. Georgie's, Georgie's got a lot of character, and uh, he finds a way to stop pucks, and that's the main thing as a goalie. Yeah. So, um, but he's a great kid. He works so hard, and he wants to be a sponge, and he wants to take in all that information, and I think he's going to be a really good goalie in this league, and he's going to do some special things for us. Now, let's date back uh, from the playoff series versus the Flynn Firebirds up until that last preseason game. I believe Julian Fantino has eight goals in his past 10 games, if that sounds correct. Mm -hmm. uh, Greg, what's the expectations for Tino this year? 
Well, it'd be obviously great if he could continue that. Uh, that's <laughs> 60 goals. But uh, um, listen, this this kid's skill set is is next to uh, it, anybody's in this league. He shoots the puck like a pro. He's got skill. He, he it was a long process for him, as we talked earlier, of, of learning how to play, use his line mates, uh, defensive hockey, um, and uh, and he's and he figured it out in the in the playoffs, and and he's continued. Uh, continued that through the, uh, um, th you know, through the uh, exhibition series. So we're hoping for big things for him, and I don't want to put a number on it because 60 is 60 is a lot of goals. <laughs> and, um, so, but uh, he does have definitely have the skill set to uh, produce offensively with uh, our abundance of other guys that we feel are going to fill the net as well. Now that you guys finished the home and home series with. Uh with North Bay uh, Tuesday with a 9-3 win at home to two very depleted lineups. Um, when those games happen, when a lot of your players are gone to camps, third players are gone to camps as well, what are you guys particularly looking for um, as some of these players might be playing out of position, Sam Sedley, some players might be playing up in the lineup? I'll yeah. ask that to Sean, sorry. Yeah, I think, I think a big thing for that is just for them to get valuable minutes. You know, you get to see them in those uh, situations that they probably wouldn't be. Um, but it's great to see them kind of get in those valuable situations and learn something, get to see how their brain works and see how their hockey sense is. And they get those repetitions of being in that situation at a higher speed, higher compete level and that stuff. So I think that's invaluable experience for them. And, you know, I think anyone that watched that game saw Sam Sedley play on forward and, <laughs> and pretty, pretty dynamic up there. So. Um, it was just great to see. Now, in my eyes, one of the best players on the ice uh, was an overage defenseman, Nolan Seed. He had two very nice assists, um, one right after the other for some backdoor tap-ins. In particular, the one on Thomas Chafe, he was looking one yeah. way and then just tap. Chafe just had his stick there and it, and it went to the back of the net. Nolan Seed is a guy that could be a game changer for your team this season. Uh, Greg, you, you had him last year. What do you expect from Nolan Seed? Um... Well, I taught him that movie. I, I, showed, <laughs> I showed him my game film from uh, back when I was playing. But uh, no, Cedar, listen, he went through uh, an awful year last year with injury, and uh, and every time he got going, he got you know he got hurt again. And um, so, listen, we want him to be you know healthy for for 68 games here, and and um, he's very very skilled, and and you know he's always wants more, and he you know he wants to get on the penalty kill. And and so he's working with Jordan with that and obviously he's a power play guy and um, our power play looked great uh, with him at the top there and um, you know he he's uh, he sees the ice he makes plays he was extremely extremely good in the, in the Flint series and we're just seeing that he builds off of builds off of that and and uh, and continues uh, being that strong 200 foot player for us now uh, five minutes before we go to break so last question then we'll throw out our trivia question you have the opportunity to win a pair of tickets to the home opener this Saturday versus the Kitchener Rangers. Um, probably a funny story now that it's over, but not Tuesday at the time. Denny Gore comes off the plane, oh makes it to the game about 30 minutes before warm-up. Now, he led the team last season, but he was a minus player. He got better as the year progressed, but he didn't score a goal in the playoffs. Obviously, going to an NHL camp helps, but what does he have to do to elevate his game to the next level and potentially lead this team in points this season? Yeah, it's uh, and that's that's the thing with this team uh, this year. Obviously, Denny led from pretty much from start to finish uh, last year, and but um, you know he had started getting guys coming up uh, up his heels there, and, and that's what we want. And uh, Denny's a very skilled guy. He's um, he's got a great shot, he, and the one thing that that we loved with Denny that he he was not producing in, in the playoffs, but he worked extremely extremely hard, and. Um, uh, in both ends of the rink, um, I think plus minus sometimes you know is overrated um, unless they're directly your fault. But um, you know we had some some issues. We we moved him from center to wing, and you know he's a guy that we can we tinker with that way depending on our our, our matchups and our line combinations. And he's just got to continue to uh, to get better here and, and get bigger and, and and stronger as most of these kids. But listen, Denny's going to have a real good year for us and. 
and uh, and we're excited to have him for sure. Denny, Denny said a funny story last year on Attack Rap. It was late March when we had him on for the second time, and Denny said, I'm not a math guy, but at Christmas I was minus 20, and I'm only minus 18 right now, so that's plus two since Christmas time. So he's a funny guy too. Yeah, and, and, and honestly, that's true. It was, uh, he, he stayed right around there, and, and and listen, he, these kids uh, last year were were uh, were playing against, you know, top lines. We were extremely, extremely young, and, and playing against the uh, the evangelistas and uh, and all the top end guys. So um, it was a learning curve for for our team. And and I think as you as you've seen through the, the first half of the year, and then we got to uh, after the trade deadline of of moving to great players in, in Goose and Parrot, we um, we took off and, and uh, I think, I don't know if I, I think we were 15, 3, 2 and 1 or something going down the stretch and obviously uh, lost by one one uh, one goal in the, in, in, a, in the playoffs against an extremely uh, well, uh, extremely good team in, in Flint. So we're just trying to build off of that and, and, uh, and like I said, Denny Gore will be a huge part to our success. How do you guys uh, take that in the room when you see Denny Gore walking in 30 minutes before? Probably doesn't even get to stretch. Are you giving him a hard time there? No, we we knew it and um, we knew where he was, and that wasn't his fault by any means. And uh, we just said it's back to minor hockey days and <laughs> get dressed, buddy. We got a game here, so uh, he was great about it and went out and, and played extremely well. So right, right, up Den- right up Denny's alley, though, just show up, play hockey. <laughs> yeah. Right up his He's alley. Old school. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, hey, let's throw out the trivia question. Um, it's the theme question for the Kitchener Rangers. Uh, it's a two-part question. The Owen Sound attack played the Kitchener Rangers blank times last year and won blank games versus them in the season series. Coach Walters, don't give the answer away. No. Got to, got to uh, text Mark Perry the answer to that. Once again, how many times did the Owen Sound attack play the Kitchener Rangers last year and how many games did they win? And before we go off the air, that final game, Colby Barlow finishing it off in overtime, that was that was probably one of the standouts for me last year. Yeah, that was that was special, and you know to see a underage player have 15 shots on net is, <laughs> you know, it's just, it's it's crazy to think you know about this guy. But uh, I'll tell you guys one quick story of Kobe's character. You know they wanted you know our guys wanted to get him his 30th. All the the playoff stuff was all all done, and and uh, we were passing passing the puck to him, and came back to the bench. He goes, guys, stop just feeding me the puck. We have to get ready for the playoffs. And I was like, oh, wow, like 16 year old kid uh, thinking about the team. So it was, it's a special kid. There we have it. We still have another uh, half the episode on the other side. Of the break. We'll talk special teams breakdown this weekend's matchup versus the, the London Knights and the Kitchener Rangers and much more. You're watching Attack Rap on Rogers TV. in part by Raven Reads. Unbox Indigenous Voices. Subscribe today at ravenreads.org. Sports fans know Sundays are for football. That's why you need NFL Sunday tickets. With NFL Sunday ticket, you'll get every live game, every Sunday afternoon, all season long. Follow your favorite teams and players live in HD. Order NFL Sunday ticket and get up to 200 regular season games. Call your local service provider today. Hey, you're so right. Zach has terrible takes. I know, right? Like, legit. Everybody makes one of my take, just because I wanted to be bold and just throw myself out there. But uh, also, I got to apologize quickly. Uh, I can't come back next season. Live Golf has paid me $50 million to do their sports rap show. <laughs> the Jays do not make the playoffs. That's it, that. I'm leaving. That's when Odell Beckham Jr. will be donning the green and yellow. 
Hello everyone, your host Antoine Hashem here on the couch and welcome to season eight. Yay! Eight seasons and we've got a lot of awesome guests coming up so keep watching. and Adrian Musso, joined by head coach Greg Walters and assistant coach Sean Tickle. Guys, the final preseason game last Saturday. These next games are for real. They're going to count towards the uh, Midwest Division standings. We'll get into that a little bit later. Let's talk about that final game before we move on. A 3-1 to one victory over the Barry Colts to go perfect. You guys got a lot of penalty kill work that, that game, but Nick Chenard, when he was called upon, I thought he was exceptional Saturday night. For sure, Ricky uh, definitely was the backbone of Saturday night, and especially with all those all those PKs. Um, sometimes your goalie's got to be your best PKer, so he was that night, and he showed well. And I got to give props to Jordan Hill and all the kids, and having great great kills, and just giving us a little bit of life and giving us a chance to win. Now uh, we mentioned the preseason games earlier on. You mentioned you liked the four games, but would you have liked a Western Conference opponent in there, seeing what you're going up against this year? No, I think it, you know how it was is is fine. We see them, in, we see them enough, and we definitely saw them enough last year. So, um, you know, it's it's good to uh, to play games, and um, you know, against everybody else. And um, listen, we were just really uh, really excited about our compete level and, and how our kids worked, uh, being down so many guys, and and you really just see the young kids getting better and better every day. And um, it was uh, it was fun to, to compete like that. And, and then come out with a win. Now you said it just there that you had seen these teams enough last season. Are you excited about this new season going back to the old format of playing every single team in the OHL in their own barns? So now the guys like Cedric Gaino, Nolan Seed are going to go to Ottawa and Kingston yeah. to play in front of their own home. Uh, their own families. Yeah, obviously that's you know that's the way it is, and obviously last year was uh, was different. It was it was fun too. It's just you know you you play teams twelve times. It's going to get really heated, and uh, you know, sometimes even between the coaches. So um, <laughs> not that I ever would do that, but um, it was uh, you know it's it's great to get back to uh, uh, the normal uh, the normal way, and and we're excited to uh, you know to get on road trips. Uh, you know, it's it's great for team bonding and, and get out to Ottawa and Peterborough and Kingston and and, and like you said, these kids uh, get uh, get a chance to play in front of their family and friends is, is special. Now, Sean, on the contrary to that, you were with the Niagara Ice Dogs last season. Obviously, didn't go up against the Owen Sound attack. Was there noise in the Eastern Conference about that 16-year-old Colby Barlow and what he did last season? Yeah, kind of what he did last season kind of put some rumbles through the whole league, right? So um, definitely there was a lot of a lot of the young guys talking about him and older guys were like, oh, this is a 16-year-old putting up <laughs> this kind of numbers. So um, there definitely was a lot of rumbling in the East about him. Now you, you mentioned games get feisty, people go to the penalty box. You guys had in the preseason 14 power plays and you uh, you scored five goals, making one of the highest power play percentages in the OHL in the preseason. Is that due to you this season? Because mm -hmm. Sean, and I point out Sean, uh, because the power play and the penalty kill last year, Greg, was one of your weak points actually, uh, mm -hmm. as, as a team as a whole. Or is that just the players getting older and getting more comfortable with the system? Well, I, I obviously we give uh, props to to Sean here on on, uh, on working on our, our power play and and uh, and there's some really good things. Joey Hishon was amazing. Listen, at the end of the day, it's, it's all on my head, my head. And uh, um, listen, our penalty kill wasn't uh, great during the regular season last year, but we were over 90% in in the in the playoff series. And uh, so it's like you said, it, that, that's exactly what it is. We had so many rookies that. Um, and young young players that weren't uh, in those situations ever, and um, so it was a process to, to get there. Um, our power play was was hot, and then it, you know it, it went cold, and, and that's you know when I think Danny Gore was our leading scorer, um, was he 40th in the league? It's, it's tough. You, you need you know evangelistas, and these guys are you know they've done it for three and four years, and and, uh, um, and that's what we'll have this year. Now and, before. Before we talk about this year's penalty kill, you mentioned it last 
last playoff, you're going up against Brennan Othman, who scored yeah. 50 goals, Piercy, Lombardi. That's a stacked offense, and yeah. you guys shut them down for the most yeah. part on special teams. Yeah, it was it was amazing, and that's you know one of the reasons that we were able to to go to Game Seven. Um, so they had great special teams, and and we were able to uh, to to match that. And uh, as I think Jordan uh, Jordan talked about, they I think Flint scored three goals, and uh, on the, their power play, and we were we scored three shorthanded. So to come out of a seven game series against Flint being even uh, is it, is pretty spectacular. And um, as you saw last night, uh, we have to get our discipline in, in order here. But uh, um, they got one at a, one. They were one for nine last yeah. night, and, and that was a five on three goal. So um, that's something that uh, that we've really bared down on here in, in practice, and and uh, and having Sean in a, in a new voice, and Joey Hishon was a, was amazing with with our kids, and um, and now we have Teeks here, and, and we're off to a great start. So it better continue. The uh, the one special team goal. <laughs> no, the one special team goal Saturday night to tap in top of the crease so not much Nick could have done there but you mentioned it the penalty kill between Tuesday against North Bay and Saturday versus the Barry Colts got a lot of work what did you guys like that you saw from the penalty kill unit and what needs um, maybe a little bit adjusted here before you go up against London on Friday well first of all it's discipline uh, second of all you know the, a lot of these are done with our kids and, and uh, with uh, you know five guys in NHL camp and and guys playing in, in different spots. But it was it was great to to have a Ben Cormier go out there and uh, and prove that he he belongs. Um, you know, once the regular season started, he, he did a tremendous job. But you know, now you add the the, the Lawrences and, and the Petro, you know, Petro and Gwendon and um, it, it's it's great that. Uh, we can get our our older guys who went through that in the in the playoffs, and and then our young guys just you know learn from them. And, and like I said, Jordan Hill does an amazing job, so um, we're pretty confident with that uh, going into Friday. Now, the most recent import selection, Schweingruber has got his first few games in in the OHL. What have you guys liked uh, so far from what you've seen from your 19-year-old defenseman? I think for us right now, he, he's a one-man breakout. Um, you guys can see how slippery he is and how loose he is. He's got a ton of hockey sense. He's got great vision. He's a great puck mover. Um, he's got a really good shot from the point. And I think he's going to be a real, real good addition on the back end, real good addition to our power play. And our penalty kill, he has great reads. And um, he's starting to fit in. He's starting to loosen up a little bit around the room. And, you know, he's having a smile in it And he's having a good time every time, every day at the rink. So, what, uh, what transitions did he have to make coming over from North America? I think he's leaving his his family and, and friends. Uh, he came over with no suit. I remember, <laughs> I didn't see him get on the the bus in Barrie, and uh, he got off, and I was sitting at the front of the bus, and I'm like, "What is this kid wearing?" <laughs> I, I and uh, I didn't know if it was you know a thing from Europe. Is that how they got off? But uh, anyways, we got that uh, sorted out. But he he's a tremendous kid, and. Uh, you know he's got to get used to the size of the ice and uh, and playing different styles of, of hockey, um, where you know in the Swiss he, they played the same you know the same way all the way up and now you know he's coming to the North America game so uh, he's made a great adjustment he's he's very physical um, you know he, he likes to throw the body and um, as Sean said he, he makes plays and he makes plays under pressure which is is uh, the best thing that we love about him. Now, one of the toughest positions to play in hockey is that defensive defenseman position. And you have a 16-year-old right now in Braden Rogers who's looking very, very smooth on the back end uh, for a 16-year-old. Um, is, is his ceiling as high as it could be? Yeah, I mean, no. This kid's this kid's got a very, very high ceiling. He, the way he skates, his edges, his poise, um, his hockey, his hockey sense is is very high. Um, listen, he's 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 uh, he's a kid, and he's got to get bigger and stronger for sure. Um, which again, Andy Player does an amazing job with these these kids. And uh, but we're really, really excited of, of uh, where uh, where Roger can get to. For how hard he shoots the puck as a 16 year old yeah. too is crazy. Yeah. Really? Crazy. He has a hard shot? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. He's got a rocket. Yeah.
He's uh he's listed I think 140 pounds or yeah. something. So he's I a little heavier than he's that. He's up to 160. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. He was real proud to say that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Say that. Had a few rocks yeah. in his pocket. Yeah. In pocket yeah. Sure. We'll round out the 16-year-old talk with uh, Antonio Terracini and uh, Ben Comier. What would be the biggest adjustment for them coming from minor hockey and to the, playing into the OHL? Is it the speed of the game, the physicality, or something else? I think for them, it's just doing it all the time. You know, it's for them playing away from the puck. It's they're coming from minor hockey where it's kind of just like, oh, hey, like, you know, Tony, Ben, just go take the puck and score. It's, that doesn't happen in the Ontario Hockey League. You know, you got to play, you got to play without the puck and just learn to do things at a higher pace, a higher compete level. Um, just those little things, bringing it every day um, is a big thing that I think they're just learning and they're, you can see that they're starting to change and they're starting to really grasp that. All right, we have to ask the question now. I was maybe a little surprised to see Sam listed at center. Um, feel free both to answer. What were your guys' thoughts on the play? I know I think it was Dale DeGray that said he's just a student of the game. He loves the game of hockey. Yeah. Was he open to it right away and what did you guys think of his performance? Yeah, we used him actually last year um, through, uh, you know, a few games. Um, and, and Dale's right, uh, his hockey sense is, is so, so high. Um, he's, he's our most skilled player and, um, and, and probably our smartest player. So he, he's able to, to make that, uh, that change. Um, why we did it was through... Uh, we had guys at camp, so we were short forward, so we moved him up, and, and it's something that we'll just tinker with. You know, I, I think, uh, you know, he's a, he's a defenseman at Hardy. He, he's a one-man breakout for us, and he's able to uh, to join the rush and, and make plays out of our zone and create offense from the back end as well. So, um, you know, we'll just, you know, it, it's just something that we have in our in our bag here that we, we use once in a while. I mean, when you get to work with Ryan O'Reilly through Joey Hitchens, summer camp uh, skills corp there learning face-offs from one of the best yeah. in the nhl that's obviously an advantage for you guys yeah it said it's great especially on the 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 right uh, the right side there being a the right shot uh really it's him and, and denny gore and and sense was extremely uh, extremely good at it last year and and he actually works on it in practice he's uh, like i said he's at the rink all day and night and uh and he works on all the the little things that that matter and um it's like i said it's just it's great for for us coaches to be able to uh, to be able to use him in, in different areas on the ice. Talking some Owen Sound attack uh, attack hockey in the summertime, just to local folks around the area, they say, who's an X factor for you this year? And my answer to them would be Caleb Lawrence. You're adding a first line mm -hmm. center. I imagine his work ethic throughout the summer was off the roof. He gets drafted to LA. Yeah. And now you have that first line center caliber added into your lineup. What are your guys' expectations and just happy to see him play hockey again this year yeah this kid's 19 years old he's played 40 games in the in the league uh, he's played two games in the last two years so uh we're we're extremely excited to see where he gets to he's so motivated right now he took care of his shoulder and and uh and i thought it was an amazing pick by la um if you if you saw him play the two games he was very dominant with his size and his skill set and um you know we've we've moved him into the middle he's he's uh, so reliable and he's mean he's uh he's going to be a force in this league this year and um he got in his first fight in, in the nhl camp <laughs> and uh um so he was uh, he had a great camp and in la was extremely happy with him so we're excited to see what he does here we're uh he, you know he's going to be a huge part to our success for sure and sean just to follow up on that i was watching just a practice around training camp Caleb Lawrence, center of the ice, taking draws, and he's winning a lot of them, and it's he's putting his body into it and bringing the puck back. He's going to be a huge advantage even for a power play guy for you guys this year, getting the puck back to a Sedley or a Nolan seat. He's, yeah, he's definitely going to be a huge advantage. And, you know, with that size and that reach down low, it's going to be tough to get pucks off of him. Um, so that's just a, another piece of the puzzle for us. And, you know, like, like Greg said, he's just, he's been working so hard and he's trying to keep himself healthy and hopefully we can keep him healthy for a full year here and we can reap the rewards of the player that he is. Now, I kind of mentioned it a little bit earlier uh, in the show when we were talking about Coley Barlow. Do you guys like his chippiness and his extra, it, it, it seems like at times it's extra energy being used, um, maybe not when it's necessary or do, is there a way to hone that in and use it when it is necessary? 
Yeah, I, I mean, everybody knows what, what he's about, and that's what makes him special. He's a competitor, and he hates losing. Um, he hates being scored against uh, more than anything you guys have seen. And it's uh, to see that as a 16-year-old, it's it's amazing. So, yeah, sometimes you got to hold him in. But I always said as a coach, you, you want to be able to bring kids down than, than bring them up. It's it's very hard to, to, uh, to bring kids, um, you know, energy level and compete level up and and uh, when you know we can hone it down and he's an amazing kid and um, he, he actually took a penalty for saying something to the ref and uh, um, I said that will be the last time you do that Kobe and he said yes I know coach and, uh, and, and we're all good yeah now now he uh, the early mock draft rankings have came out and he's and he's on the on the list on the top of the list in the in the mid uh, 15 area range What's it gonna take, Sean, for him to crack that top ten this year? I think I think for him it's just to get off to a good start. Um, he's got such a good shot and he's got such good offensive instincts that he's gonna get his points, he's gonna get his he's gonna get his cookies, he's gonna get his goals. But just proving to everyone that he is that two hundred foot player and that he can play at that level and play at that speed and do it consistently night in and night out, I think will be a big thing for him. But you know, for us we've we kinda of preached to him we don't want that to be a pressure for him you know we want him just to be the best Kobe Barlow every day you know you don't need to listen to what everyone writes in the media or what, what everyone writes about you he just needs to show up and be the best player he can be every day and we got the utmost faith in him that he's going to do that just, um, I think a big thing for him is just there's no ego with Kobe never like I don't think he'll has, has had will ever get so bit, big so um, I think he'll end up eventually reaching his goals and doing that but um, just showing up every day and just being the best player that he can be just uh, one last thing for you, Greg. What have you noticed from Colby this year? Maybe that's changed, even if it's just a little area in the game, ever since he came back from that gold medal experience with Hockey Canada. Yeah, he had a tremendous uh, summer uh, with Gary Roberts training him, and he's he's thicker and he's faster, and um, you know um, he's just uh, he's, he's his shots better and he's he's moving good. He's he's just he has all he cares about is winning, and it's it's amazing, um, you know it's amazing to see uh, a young man like that, and, and we're really lucky to have him. Now, last, last season, you guys got off to a tough start. Maybe it was because there was a new coaching staff, maybe the pandemic. There's a lot of factors to your tough start, but then you guys got the ball rolling after an eight-game losing streak. And then the playoffs, you guys did really well. Now a four-game winning streak to, in the preseason. What's it going to take Friday and Saturday to get a, your season opener win and a home opener win? Yeah, listen, it's not easy. It's it's not, and, and especially going into London. Uh, you know, with our young kids, they've never seen it. Just like last year, uh, going in and playing in front of 10,000 people, it's uh, it's an eye opener for these guys. So, you know, the big thing is 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 doing the little things that we talk about every single day. Not trying to do too much, being very responsible, managing the puck, and, and staying disciplined. Um, you know, we're we're lucky now that we we get. Uh, you know, Caleb was back today at, on the ice, which he looked amazing. And uh, tomorrow we'll have Gwendolyn and, and Petrosky, so we'll have uh, pretty much our full lineup uh, back tomorrow. So, uh, you know, it's you know now you got to talk about line combinations and and, and getting those. They they haven't uh, obviously won't have a lot of time to get going, but that's the same as every other every other team. So, um, you know, there's uh, there's a way to play. And, and for us is how we play and, and uh, to play and be able to play in, in Owen Sound you have to play hard and you got to play 200 feet and um, and you know we, uh, there's no doubt in my mind that um, you know we don't want to put extra pressure on our kids and, and uh, but uh, there's no doubt in my mind that we'll have a very successful season. Now it seems as though one of your strength in your guys' lineup is going to be scoring goals. Uh, you, we've already mentioned Colby Barlow, Cedric Gaines, Dylan Serbak, Petrovsky. The list goes on and on. It's, it's it's a rolodex really of people that could fill the net for you guys. Now, who might be that energy guy? You guys had Stefan Makachek and and Logan Lesage throw big hits late last season. Who might be somebody that fills that role, Sean, of being an energy guy or a shutdown guy late in games? I think uh, Madden Steen's taken a big step for us. You know, he came into camp. He's He's bigger, stronger, he's faster. Um, he definitely wants to carry that torch on. He wants to be a Mark Woolley-esque type defenseman. 
um, and he's preached that to us, and he's come in and he's done that so far. And I think another one is is going to be Luke Schweinhuber. Like he, like Greg said, he's he stepped up a couple times in preseason and thrown some pretty heavy hits, and and he wants to be that X factor. And again, like Greg touched on earlier, Caleb Lawrence was playing with a big, big edge um, in the preseason before he left, and. He came back today and just that edge has grown and he wants to be that guy and he wants to be that presence. So um, I think those guys are going to be guys that we're going to rely on heavily for those things. Yeah, and, I, and obviously the, the build off that is, is if you watch the game Saturday night, everyone was doing it. And and that's how we play and that's how we want to play. And, uh, you know, you got uh, Okatundo and, and Jordan back there who compete extremely hard on the back end. And uh, Cormier is uh, working Bonanito, Fantino, they all work and and, uh, and compete extremely hard. So, um, you know, we're just excited to get going here. Without giving too much away, though, can we provide an update to the fans on how Teos is doing after Saturday night? He's uh, He's... 100 percent fine okay. uh, luckily it looked uh, it looked bad and I, I think it scared him you know more than more than anything which getting a shot fired at your head you, I, I tell these kids you don't want to end up you know like me so take care <laughs> take care of the brain and then uh, but luckily he's he's fine he's been uh, he practiced today and and there's no issues there all right I'm glad to hear that uh, so we talked about Friday night in London Saturday versus the Kitchener Rangers all these Midwest division games are going to matter the division looks so strong this year mm -hmm. no comparison to any other year what's it going to take to shut down those top Kitchener guys and Francesco Pinelli and Joseph Serp and come away with the victory Saturday night yeah that's it just you know just play our way like we we played them 12 times last year we um, I don't want to give away your trivia question but uh, <laughs> um, you know we we had a great series against them it was uh, you know it was physical it was uh, it was real good hockey um, you know you had in London you know going into London no matter what year you you have it's it's tough and you got the Guelph Storm and, and uh, who are going to be extremely extremely good so um, you know like I said what we talk about every day is get better every day and, and working on the smaller details of the game and uh, and we'll be fine. Now, Dale DeGray didn't want to answer this question last week, so I assume that you will not answer this this week, but I'll ask it in a different question. The captaincy is vacant throughout the preseason. There was no A's, no letters on the sweaters. Do we expect to see a captain named before Friday? At, or do you guys have people in mind that need to prove themselves early on in the season? Yeah, that's, I mean, listen, our guys from last year, uh, you know, Gavin Bryant wore a, wore a letter. Ethan Burroughs wore a letter. Sedley wore a letter. Uh, amazing, uh, amazing kids. And uh, um, and you add in, you know, the uh, the likes of, uh, you know, like I said, Gavin Bryant. Lawrence has come back. Um, you know, we we got, we have an abundance of leadership and character. Um, to answer your question, yes, we'll have a captain uh, named for Friday night. Beautiful. So. Fans, stay tuned to that. There will be a captain on on the ice Friday night and at home on Saturday night uh, at the Bayshore. Now, you, you mentioned uh, Gavin Bryant's character a little bit. Last season, uh, as the fans might have heard out here on Attack Rap, he put on a little performance on the bus for karaoke. And then just last weekend at Rib Fest, he got on stage and sang some Luke Combs. Now, it must be nice to have a guy in the dress room as a character like that. And then we heard like Julian Fantino's one to always be given the gear. So it's a light in the room and that makes for good uh, good vibes as well on the ice. Yeah, that's uh, for sure. It was, listen, we uh, we got to work there at, uh, at Rift Pass and we were able to get him up there. And uh, you know, most of the team was there and, and Sean and I, and uh, man, it was, it was fun to see a 17 year old kid who's really only saying in front of his friends and he rocked it, man. It was, it was pretty good. He was really out. good. Yeah, he would for sure. And uh, you know, the, there was a lot of people there and you know, he had the, uh, had the moves going on too. So uh, he plays the guitar as well and he, he's a special kid. You gotta give Wally some credit though. He goes the one that pulled the strings to get him up. There. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I chased, uh, tried to chase the, uh, the big guy around and try to get him up there. I, and I just thought it would be nice for the family, the, the, the people that were there. It's in our parking lot and to get an Owen Sound attack up there. And, and, the, uh, and the, the people loved it. So 
Now, obviously, uh, we'll go back to the captain's seat. Mark Woolley was an incredible leader on and off the ice last year. What mm -hmm. are some qualities that you hope uh, your captain this year maybe takes away from Mark Woolley last season? Yeah, Woolley was an amazing, amazing person and, and what he's gone through gone through in his life and, and to overcome. And, and uh, I, I listen, I loved coaching, uh, loved coaching Mark Woolley. And, um, you know, obviously he brought the uh, physicality and, and uh, uh, came to play every single night and, and for the most part was disciplined and, and stuck up for his teammates and, and was really good with, uh, you know, with putting things together off the ice to make sure that the team uh, bonded and, and he did a really good job so um, the, the guy that replaces him will will be uh, will, will do that and, uh, and and we look forward to it and um, you know going through the process here of, of talking with everybody and it's been a long process of, of, of going through the guys because we have so many great leaders and, and great kids so um, going back to the high expectations with the team this year, you guys were an honorable mention in the CHL top 10. If you don't feel free both to answer, do you guys look into that much? Do you like maybe that expectation on the team or don't want to get it into the kids' heads? I think we have, we have our own internal um, perceptions that we want and we don't want to read our own articles and get too, feeling too good about ourselves and get away from what we're actually here to do. So. Um, we take that into consideration, but it's not something that we hold, we hang our hat on. Um, we hang our hat on showing up every day and going to work every day, and that's mainly what we're here for, and the rest of the stuff will take care of itself. And uh, final question for you, Coach. Um, what does that Game 7 loss last year do for this team moving forward, who's a young team? Yeah, I mean, it was invaluable, the, the experience of going through that series of, of how it was and, and to, uh, you know, to um, be down 2-1 and with a minute and a half left or whatever and, and pull the goalie and uh, to see that last puck go in our net, uh, it, was, it was sad. And our kids, you know, see them crying and and because uh, it was a war and we're, you know, the, what they can take away is, is I have that on video, and that's where they're, they're uh, you know, I, I know where they can get to, and that's what we talk about every day is I've seen where you can get to, and we want to bring that starting Friday night and get better from, from there. Well, as we mentioned, we're all out of time. Thank you to the both of you Thanks. for taking the hour long, and welcome to the Rogers studio. Uh, best of luck this weekend and in the future. Thanks so much for having us. Thanks so much for having us on, guys. Head coach Greg Walters and Sean Teekle of the Owen Sound Attack catch uh, both games this weekend on Rogers TV, London uh, Friday night at Budweiser Gardens, and then head down to the rink this Saturday for the home opener. Give these guys the support that they deserve against the Kitchener Rangers. Next week, we'll have the three most recent NHL draft picks. And thank you to all for tuning in. You're watching Attack Wrap on Rogers TV. Rogers TV viewer response line. Email us or connect with us on social media.
sports fans know Sundays are for football. That's why you need NFL Sunday tickets. With NFL Sunday ticket, you'll get every live